Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna, we are reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Third canto, chapter four, text number twenty-six. Twenty-six. Okay. Udaba uvacha nanute tatto samradhya vishika ushara bontike. Shakshat Bhagavata Dishto Martya Lokam Jihashataha Udava Uvacha Nanute Tatto Samradhya Vishikaushara Bhantike Shakshat Bhagavata Dishto Martya Lokam Jihashata Udava Uvacha Udava Se Nanu However Te Of yourself Tatrasam Stay nearby Shakshat Directly Bhagavata 
by the personality of Godhead. Adhistaha instructed Martyalokam mortal world Dihasada while quitting. Translation. Please repeat. Sri Udava said, You may take lessons from the great learned sage Maitreya, who is nearby and who is worshipable for reception of transcendental knowledge. He was directly instructed by the personality of Godhead while he was about to quit this mortal world. Sri Uddhava said, you may take lessons from the great learned sage Maitreya, who is nearby and who is worshipable for reception of transcendental knowledge. He was directly instructed by the personality of Godhead while he was about to quit this mortal world. Although one may be well versed in the transcendental science, one should be careful about the offense of Mariada Vyapti Krama or impertinently surpassing a greater personality. According to a scriptural injunction, one should be very careful of transgressing the law of Mariada Vyapti Krama because by so doing, one loses his duration of life. His opulence, fame, and piety, and the blessings of all the world. To be well versed in the transcendental science necessitates awareness of the techniques of spiritual science. Uddhava, being well aware of all these technicalities of transcendental science, Advise Vidura to approach Maitreya Rishi to receive transcendental knowledge. Vidura wanted to accept Uddhava as his spiritual master. But Uddhava did not accept the post because Vidura was as old as Uddhava's father, and therefore Uddhava could not accept him as his disciple. Especially when Maitreya was present nearby. The rule is that in the presence of a higher personality, one should not be very eager to impart instructions, even if one is competent and well-versed. So Uddhava decided to send an elderly person like Vidura to Maitreya, another elderly person. But he was well-versed also because he was directly instructed by the Lord while he was about to quit this mortal world, since both Uddhava and Maitreya were directly instructed by the Lord, both had the authority to become the spiritual master of Vidura, or anyone, or anyone else. But Maitreya, being elderly, had the first claim to become the spiritual master, especially for Vidura, who was much older than Uddhava. One should not be eager to become a spiritual master cheaply for the sake of profit and fame, but should become a spiritual master only for the service of the Lord. The Lord never tolerates the impertinence of Mariada Vyaptikrama. One should never pass over the honor due to an elderly spiritual master in the interest of one's own personal gain and fame. Impertinence on the part of the pseudo-spiritual master is very risky to progressive spiritual realization. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pracharine Nidvisesha Sunyavadi Bhastya Devadesha Tarini Vanchakal Pataruvyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Padita Nam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namona Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gradhar Shiva Sari Gaudavadhar
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे उदावा उवाच नानु ते तत्व सम्राद्यां ऋषि कौशर भवन्ति के साक्षात भगवता विष्टो मार्त्या लोकम इहासता Yudhava said, you may take lessons from the great learned sage Maitreya, who is nearby and who is worshipable for reception of transcendental knowledge. He was directly instructed by the personality of Godhead while he was about to quit this mortal world. Om Tatsat. So, as Prabhupada explains, this is what's called the law of disciplic succession. Um, Prabhupada refers to the techniques of a spiritual life and one of those recommendations is to accept someone that can lead us or help us to come to Krishna. Now this is a, we may say, a basic principle in human life we all learn from somebody, even the most basic thing. Uh, when we are little, we learn how to, to even eat or walk. We, we don't know how to do those things. And then the most basic um, things, you know, in our growing up, in our education, writing, a little stick or a ball, remember? A, B, C, and simple things and you just spend a whole year learning very basic things um, but when we grow a little or a few years then we think i don't need anyone i can just do it on my own therefore krishna explains in the bhagavad gita the first element of the 20 elements of knowledge it's uh, amanitam amanitam means humility uh, and the next item is adambitam, no pride. So humility and no pride, which is pretty much synonym, but I think it's just the point that Krishna is making to ensure that we get it right. Now one time someone asked Srila Prabhupada that why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Sikshastaka? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna with Radharani's heart. What my Guru Maharaj said. Um, so they asked him, why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't emphasize the topic of parampara, taking a spiritual master in his Sikshastaka? And then Prabhupada said that people who do not understand this principle is because they haven't read carefully um, the verse, the third verse. What's the third verse? Uh, again, the same word, mana. Mana in that case means um, pride, honor. Amanina. Right? You know the translation. You say it every day here. Yeah? Amanina. The honor shouldn't be for me. Manadina. Should be for others. I should give respects to everyone. <clears throat> so Prabhupada explains that that principle of humility refers to the fact that we need to accept someone. Otherwise, we cannot learn anything. That's, that's the etiquette. That's the basic principle. But within that recommendation, there are so many details that we also have to observe. That's why some practical um, details are instructed, taught to us. When we come to a temple, we offer obeisances, and we pay obeisances in a certain way, and then we pay obeisances to the Supreme Lord, and we pay obeisances to the devotees, and we pay obeisances to Tulsi, and you know, everything is very, right? Technical, right? Um, so this is one of the recommendations, one of the cautions, when we accept the spiritual master, when we accept someone superior, 
than us. And the whole topic of this verse is what happens if you become so advanced that you become yourself qualified to be an instructing guru, guide, mentor, uh, someone like that. No? That's, that's, that's the verse. Although Uddhava was qualified, who remembers the name of the, the Sanskrit name of this offense? Mayada. Vyatikrama, Vyatikrama, Madhyada Vyatikrama, or impertinently surpassing a greater personality. So in other words, one cannot imitate um, the position of the spiritual master or the superior artificially. Now, some of you mm, surely know um, instance when Prabhupada was here, Sometimes there were what he called premature attempts to occupy his post. And some devotees, advanced and very committed and all that, um, attempted to take disciples while Prabhupada was in the, in the planet. And he corrected them. He said, you, you should not do that. This is a premature attempt. He just ties those devotees. Um, and it is quite interesting here because Prabhupada says that who remembers what happened if you commit that mistake? You lose a number of things. That's one. Anyone else? Fame. Opulence. <laughs> it could be piety. <laughs> yeah, piety. Beauty is actually true. <laughs> That's a purport. <laughs> And the blessings of all world, of all the world, the blessings. Um, human life, it's meant to obtain the blessings of others. That's what human life is for. You know, in the Vedic tradition, um, uh, it is taught that the first thing that you do, I mean, there, there are many technicalities like that, but the principle is respect. I don't remember uh, exactly if it's in Hari Bhakti Vilas or Mahabharata. I read it somewhere that even when you wake up and you touch the ground, the earth, you, you should be conscious that the earth is holding you. Yeah? And there, there is a, this reflection that thanks to Mother Earth, I'm able to, to walk and, and do whatever I have to do. So, right? And then who else do we have to offer respects? I mean, the spiritual master, do we know that one? No, the, parents. the parents. The parents, who, who does that nowadays? Right? I'm independent, I have my own credit card, my own, you know? So the, the principle of amanitam, the principle of respect, humility, is imbibed in this process of spiritual life. There's no such thing as being advanced spiritually and being very proud. That's, that's something that, that's just there. It's, the formula is there. So here, um, the scene is that Uddhava is talking to whom? Just to keep you away. Who's, who's he talking to? There's three... Bidura. Bidura. And what's the situation? Vidura wants to accept Uddhava as his spiritual master. Right? But Uddhava says, no, no, this is not proper. You rather go and take Maitreya. Although, interesting, it's very interesting, this, this uh, context, the context of this section. Because actually Prabhupada says, I think it's in previous verses, that Maitreya wasn't as pure, correct? Right? I forgot who was giving the class. Um, Maitreya is not as pure like Uddhava. In fact, Krishna himself glorifies Uddhava. Right? Not only Krishna glorifies Uddhava, but who was he thinking 
amongst maybe many other things that Krishna was thinking at the time of leaving this planet, who was he thinking of? He's in the bottom and... Huh? Ah, ah. Who? Bidura. He was thinking of Bidura. And when Bidura, I think that's at the end of this chapter. And when, when Bidura realized that my Lord was thinking of me, he starts crying and he chokes up. Right? So, there are some technicalities here. How to accept the spiritual master, how to become. Whoever is interested, Srila Prabhupada said that he wanted many, many spiritual masters. If anyone is interested for the post, we start getting ready. Um, you know how many spiritual masters Srila Prabhupada said that we need? Who, said, who knows? He said a few numbers, but the top number that he said, you know, anyone? Huh? Huh? Unlimited? Yeah, sometimes he would say something like that. But he said 10 million. 10 million. Right? So he, first he says 100,000, 10,000, 100,000, like that. Yeah. He says 10 million acharyas. Acharyas means exemplary teachers. So that's the principle. That's the principle, and we have to be careful. In other words, the spiritual scriptures gives us precautions. Like when you're driving, right? It says in the curves, you see here, it's 80, and then curve, 75, you have to be careful. And there are different signs, and sometimes it's road work, 60 or 40 Ks, and things like that. So we have to be careful. Spiritual life is great. And I never remember the Sanskrit of that famous verse that says that spiritual life is like that. Uh, who knows the Sanskrit? Oh, there you go. I'll give you my double garland. Um, so th that's, and that's why the instruction, the precautions are given here. Be careful. Maybe you are very, very advanced. But even if you are very, very advanced, you have to be conscious there are other people who you need to respect. Even though the example here is that the subtlety of this, this pastime, even though Urava, it's more advanced, and Krishna even describes him as a great personality. He himself says, no, 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 you go to Maitreya, which Prabhupada explains, the Shastra explains, that wasn't as advanced as Uddhava. But because he wanted to follow the proper process, he said, no, you go and take from him. That, that's the script. But there's something on... There's something else going on here. Um, and this, if we read carefully the Bhagavatam and we attentively um, pay attention to what Prabhupada is explaining, there was something else going on. And what's going on here, and that we will see in tomorrow's verse, is that Urava was overwhelmed with affliction. We have seen that in the previous chapters, right? What chapter is this? Four? I don't know what was it. Chapter three or in chapter two? Yeah, I think it's in chapter two. When Uravai starts describing Krishna, what happened? Every time I give classes, different audience, so can really pick on anyone. So when when Urava starts explaining about Krishna, what happened to him? In chapter two, two chapters before. What happened? He got stunned. He got stunned. Yeah, he just couldn't, just couldn't continue. He was overwhelmed by the thought of Krishna. Now remember, Krishna already has gone. Now, trying to go even deeper, in one sense, that's even a higher form of rasa because the Lord is not there. You know that common saying that you, how do you say, it? you value something or someone when the person is not there, right? Have you heard that one, yeah? Oh, gee, I gave it for granted, you know. And even, even, what's that? Oh, it is gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are many, yeah. 
In Spanish, we have a few versions of that. <laughs> yeah, but even, even uh, artists, you know, painters, this and that, when they die, then, you know, generally it is a, it is a rule that you don't normally become so famous until you die, at least in the, in the line of artists and people like that. So Urava is overwhelmed because Arjun, uh, Krishna is gone. And, and that's very, very deep. He just couldn't function anymore. And Krishna has given him an instruction. What was that instruction? You know, he, tell him to go somewhere. Badarikashram. He told him, you go there. And it's very interesting. Because, you know why he told him to go to Badarikashram? Because Krishna wanted, wanted him to go and share the knowledge that he had received from, from him to the people in Badarikashram because he hasn't gone there. The Acharyas explain. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that, you know, Krishna wants his mercy to go everywhere and therefore he sends his devotees. Right? So that's why he goes to Badarikashram. But he was very much affected by this separation. <clears throat> now, in context, uh, we are analyzing something very, very exalted. This is something that is the main theme of the tenth canto: the separation of Krishna that the gopis experienced. That's this is the, this is just a preview of what's coming. This, I mean, in my case. I'm not ready, I don't know if ever will be ready, but this is something that generally it's not discussing full. The Acharyas sometimes open up and let us know a little bit about this. But we are in third canto, yes, we are about here in Krishna's uh, proportion. So the face of Krishna in tenth canto, this will be fully described. <coughs> that separation of Krishna. Now it's interesting because Going back to the Bhagavad Gita, for example, the Bhagavad Gita starts with a very, we may say, toxic feeling. What's that feeling that Arjuna was having in, in chapter one? Remembers? He couldn't do anything. Why? Lamenting. He was lamenting, exactly. Shoka, that's the word. Prabhupada said in 1974 or 75, and he said it in other occasions, there's a famous video, when he said, if you remember, if somebody reads one word, right? One word. Even one word. Right? What the emperor was telling me a few months ago. He said, you know, I wonder which word is that? <laughs> so I was in my stupidity, I was suggesting a few words for chapter. He says, oh, that's interesting. That's really good. <laughs> you know? And I said, for example, in, in chapter one, Shoka is there. Lamentation. He says, ah, that's a good point. And then he's like, you know, so humble, encouraging us. So the whole Bhagavad Gita starts with lamentation. And the whole presentation of Krishna is to, over, to help Arjuna to overcome lamentation. That, you know, he says seven times, I have counted them, seven times in chapter two, don't lament. Don't be confused. And often you hear Prabhupada in his classes, when quoting that section of the Gita, he says, He says, uh, there are three or four times that that same line is repeated in the beginning of chapter two. And there are also other variations of the same message. What is the point of lamentation? Why? What is the use? So lamentation is the target of Krishna's preaching. So it's not good to lament. In fact, he says that if you lament, what does that mean? He explains in the, um, what is it, in the 2-2, right? Kuddastam kashmalamidam. Why are you lamenting? And what Prabhupada says in that purport, that you are talking big words, right? 
but you are lamenting like a fool. So lamenting is synonym of being a fool. Right? Oh, why did they do this to me? Why did they say that to me? Why this? Why that? Why me? Right? That's a symptom of a fool. A soldier, number soldiers. You're lamenting for something which is not worth of lamenting. That's the basic teaching of the Bhagavad Gita. And then Krishna tells him seven times, don't do this, don't lament. It's like when a little kid falls and he's crying. What do we say? Don't cry, it's okay. You, you know. So Krishna is helping Arjuna to come out of that lamentation. If you read the last verse of chapter 1, the first word of the last line, shokam, that's our word that we need to remember. First chapter, one word, lamentation. But interestingly, you go all the way to the end of the Bhagavatam. And what is the highest form of devotional feeling? Lamentation. Right? Amazing. To cry for Krishna, Prabhupada explains repeatedly, not only him, but so many. Lord Chaitanya himself says, right? When will that day come? When I will tear up for you when my um, throat is choked, right? When will that day come? This is the highest. So here, Urava, not only Urava, but others, I have a few more minutes, um, also experience that and, and show it in Bhagavatam quite early on. That's why Srila Prabhupada explains that the Bhagavatam should be read canto by canto. And then he, I think it's in the preface, um, he says, you know, the, the, the whole content is transcendental. So in other words, you know, even if you open the 12th canto or the 10th canto, you know, if you haven't read anything, there's that famous pastime, I think, I think you were narrating a few weeks ago in your seminar for book distribution, when the Krishna book appeared, right? And there was this Ratha Yatra, and the box came, and Brahmananda, I think, brought the box to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada started distributing it right there. And he was so ecstatic, and people were just snatching it off from Prabhupada's hands to the point that, that he didn't even keep one copy to himself, correct? That's the pastime. Right? So, although the technical aspect is that we should go step by step, on the other hand, sometimes he just can help us. He said, okay, I'm just going to give you, I'm just going to talk about this, you know, I know that you should, you know. So the highest form of devotion is crying for Krishna. Why they are crying for Krishna? They are not fools. Why they are crying for Krishna? Right? Let's pause there. In the first canto, we hear about this. Um, you see, the first canto is to establish the importance of the spiritual master. If you want to begin our spiritual life, we need to seek and take the instructions, directions of a spiritual master. <clears throat> so we find the story of Narada Muni. That's the first. I mean, we have. Sutta Goswami instructing the sages, Shauna Grishi representing the sages, who refers to Sukadev Goswami, who's instructing the king, Parikshit Maharaj. That's another guru disciple couple. And then we, fi we find Narada and who's instructing Vyasadev. Yeah. Listen to what Narada says. As soon as I began to meditate upon the lotus feet of the Personality of Godhead, with my mind transformed in transcendental love, tears rolled down my eyes, and without delay the Personality of Godhead, see Krishna, appear on the lotus of my heart. Right? This is, this is what Narada Muni is sharing. He continues, I'm just going to read. <clears> oh, <throat> Vyasadev, at that time, he's telling Vyasadev, he's telling his disciple this. At that time, being exceedingly overpowered by feelings of happiness, 
every part of my body became separately enlivened. Separated, separately enlivened. So each limb of his body was electrified, being absorbed in an ocean of ecstasy. I could see neither myself nor the Lord. So the spiritual master is meant to be really, really up there, experiencing these profound, deep, high levels of devotion. So this is Narada Muni, and this is First Canto, chapter 6. So quite early in the narration, we find that. Um, we also find a similar uh, uh, description in when the Pandavas um, retired. You know that chapter in the first canto? Is it 15, right? And what happens in the previous chapter, chapter 14, the departure of Krishna. This is all about the departure of Krishna. So in chapter 14, um, Arjuna has gone to, to, to finish some business because the Lord is gone. So he had to take care of some, you know, the queens and, the, and all that, and he, he couldn't function. Arjuna was meant to, to be the best warrior in the world, yes? And it is described in the Bhagavatam that some uh, gundas, how do you call those, road thieves, you know, like in the Wild West, you know, so they'll come and they steal things and like that, yeah? He couldn't even fight them, correct? And it's so beautiful how Prabhupada explains in those purposes that a devotee needs to understand that whatever capacity he or she has is because of Krishna's mercy. And when the mercy is gone, right, then you become totally dysfunctional, it is called in psychology terms. Um, so Arjuna, Judith Maharaj is asking him, haven't you completed your duties? Haven't you been able to protect others? Haven't you done this or seen inauspicious omens? What's going on? Arjuna couldn't even reply. Such a beautiful description. He's just like stunned, gone. And then, so nicely, Prabhupada explains in the next verse, or in the coming verse, purports, that what do you do when you're lamenting for Krishna? Whenever you reach that, or if you're in that stage, you would know this. What do you do if you're um, lamenting, remembering Krishna or the spiritual master? Sometimes the spiritual master leaves. Prabhupada also says, Separation be, um, between the devotee and Krishna or the disciple and the spiritual master is the same. So what happens when, 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 when that instance is there and you're experiencing that? Shira Prabhupada says, you remember what? What do you remember? Very important. What do you remember? The instructions. The instructions. Yes. You see, that's why we have to hear from superiors. <laughs> the instructions. And then Bhagavan explains, Arjuna start remembering those ambrosial words, those nectarian words that Krishna spoke to him. Huh? And he became overwhelmed. But he's thinking, you know, among 640 million people, he was the one who was chosen to be, uh, to be listening the the Bhagavad Gita like that. So this is this is the message that it's not only the technicalities, okay, you have to accept a spiritual master, then you have to for how long? One year, right? That's the GPC thing? Yeah? One year. Right? And then you have to do this form and then you have to do that exam and then you have to what else? Get the recommendation, right? And be chanting like this and doing offering and Right? That's the test. They, 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 they test you, right? And you have to tell the tilak names and all the rest. So you pass tick box, tick box, tick box. Right? But 
are, are, are we crying for Krishna? That's the, the thing. One Swami says, one of our Swamis, <laughs> says that every day we should have a moment that we devote to cry to Krishna. At least theoretically. Krishna, here I am, although tears don't come out. Nayanam galadashru daraya. Although tears don't come out, I want to cry for you. That's a famous line from my Guru Maharaj. He says, if you're not crying for Krishna, then what do you have to do? Cry for crying for Krishna. And if you're not crying for crying for Krishna, then you have to cry for crying for crying for Krishna. So here I am, I cannot, nothing is coming, you know. Nothing is coming, but please give me the opportunity to serve your devotees. That's, that's the idea. You know, just really a squeeze um, here in, in the West. Gamshas are not so popular, maybe among the devotees. <clears throat> I think they are selling gamshas in the, in the boutique. But in, in India, Gamshas is like a part of your life. It's like, like the mobile phone here. You know? right. Everywhere you go, you have to carry Gamsha. And um, so one time, I remember when I was a brahmachari, many, many moons ago, um, and I was in Mayapur, and, and we went to the Ganges with my Guru Maharaj, and, <clears throat> and then he, he said, dry the Gamcha properly. And then I was squeezing. He says, no more. And I was squeezing. And more was coming. More was coming. And then I knew something. He had something in his mind. He says, that's how you have to squeeze your heart to feel for Krishna. You think? Because he says, you think there's nothing but carry on. Just keep on. Keep on. And it will come and come. You have to endeavor hard. And I was just like, oh, OK. So that's, that's the mood. That's what Udava is showing. And that's why Vidura, who was so dear by the Lord, wanted to accept him. Vidura could have thought, oh, Krishna is thinking of me at the time of his leaving. How great I am. Why do I need a guru? But when he saw the intensity and the mercy that Krishna has given to Udava, then he says, I want you as my spiritual master. And Udava being so humble, you know, it's just a matter of humility. Amanitam Adam Bitam. Manadina. Amanina Manadena. So no, I'm not I'm not qualified. You rather take from him. He's senior and we have to follow the etiquette. You know, so what did Bidura do? He accepted. Like that. So this is this is the process. We have to accept someone, that's the message. And we have to accept. That's someone who has what Prabhupada called the vibration. One time, one lady wrote to Prabhupada saying that I'm feeling intense separation from you to the point that I cannot, I cannot function. Right? It's a beautiful letter. <laughs> and Prabhupada replied, it's very nice, your feelings that you're expressing in, in your letter. But, he says, in fact, feeling such separation from the spiritual master is non-different than feeling separation from Krishna. Right? And he said, in his usual teaching mode, there are two types of separation. The physical separation and the separation of the vibration. Right? The physical separation, sooner or later, we will be yeah, experiencing. Right? Everyone, for sure, right? In a hundred years, none of us will be in this body. Here. Maybe here, but in a different body. Like a lizard in my case behind Prabhupada. But then he said, the vibration, <clears throat> uh, the vibration, connection with the spiritual master should always be there. So you remember my teachings, you remember my instructions, and then your separation will become blissful. This is the difference. Arjuna in the beginning was feeling, um, was lamenting, and he was crying tears of ignorance, shall we say. Of course, this is just a leader. But 
it, it's suffering, it's painful. I work as a counselor and I get people crying on the phone, you know? And it's painful for them and it's painful to hear it also. But for a devotee who's experiencing such symptoms of separation from the Lord, he's blissful or she's blissful. You're crying, but your heart is being purified. And it's so enlivening. Right? So that's what we are meant to um, aim for when we chant, when we serve, right? when we read, when we associate. Right? Now I heard this. Nobody cries in Kirtan, generally. And sometimes ecstasy. Remember, which year was that? Kirtan Mela? 2014, 15, 16, maybe, yeah. And, and when the deities, Panchatattva, I mean, I don't want to make a big thing. I mean, it's, it's recorded, so I don't want to be penalized. And then the Panchatattva deities, it was like, uh, like they were crying, right, in Mayapur. And people were giving different um, reasons, the saturation and the heat. And, and, and so it was like, they were sweating. You know, because men, they are huge, right? And the different swamis, different devotees gave different reasons. Early. So, hungry. So, that's the idea. Sometimes Krishna cries. No? Damodar Lila is crying. It's crying. No? Tears of love. It's ecstasy. Sometimes the gopis, you know? And the last verse of the Shikshastaka. How? What? What's that verse? Ashlisha. Ashlisha means the pleasure of having when someone that you love hugs you. Need a hug, right? It's oh, okay. Father, mother, husband, wife, kids. Oh, hug, right? Ashlisha ba padar pinashtumam. So hugging, it's nice, but if somebody tramples you, that's the next word. So if you give me a hug. That's great. But even if you stump, if you jump on me, trample me, still you will be the Lord of my heart. So that Lord Chaitanya, that's what he says. Yeah? Do whatever you want. That's what Prabhupada says when he arrived to, in America. What did he say? Make, make me dance, make me dance, whatever. I mean, Imagine you almost get what was it, two heart attacks, two heart attacks, right? Right? He says, if I would have had the third, I wouldn't have told the story, right? Imagine two heart attacks, you know, I would have turned around and said, forget it. <laughs> I tried my base, almost, almost died here. I'll just go back. Huh? But no, he kept going. And then he had a stroke after a year or so, and he kept going had an accident and things I was robbed and he kept going kept going and he says humbly I will go to the port and and I will I will check when is the last the next ship leaving I mean he's showing that human aspect he was thinking I may go back but he stayed and he stayed and he stayed and when he was about to pass from this world, what did he do? He said, take me to America. He told Tamar Krishna, Maharaj, take me to America. He was on his way to Gita Nagari, you know that, right? He said, I show you how to live, now I'm gonna show you how to die. So Tamar Krishna Maharaj, diligent as usual, arranged everything, and they took Prabhupada, and then they stopped in London, but in London he got really ill, and then he said, no, the time has come. Take me back to Vrindavan. So took him back to Vrindavan. But Prabhupada wanted, as he said, what did he say? Die on the battlefield. That was his mood. You know? So at some point, tears or hugs or this and that are irrelevant. The important aspect of our process is the feeling. Because you are feeling blissful. Anandam buddhivartanam. So that is the mood of Uddhava. And that's what Vidura uh, wanted from him. 
But he said, no, 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 you go there. But the mood is the same. That is Bhagavatam. Okay, so we stop here. No time for questions, because Prashadam is there. Krishna has it here. You have a question? Oh, you have a question. Okay. Let me have you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Parampara is like, like the rivers here. You live in the area? Yeah, yeah. So you are used to, yeah, more than me, yeah. But I'm fascinated with this area because everywhere you go, left or right, you always find some kind of creek or river, right? So Parampara is like that, you know, it's just flowing. And they are going to the ocean, like that. They all are taking you to the ocean. So sometimes you turn left or right. And yes, the technicality goes up to some extent. I mean, who am I to say that? But anyway, technicalities are there. But what I learned is, many, many years back, because, you know, my spiritual, I was in South America, my spiritual master on the other side of the world. So he will come once or twice a year for a day and a half at a time, right? So we were like, oh. So I told him, you know, we miss you too much. This is, this is unbearable. And then he said, you know, if you take shiksha instructions, example, from others, you consider that as my mercy. So, you know, Prabhupada has given us so many great devotees, great examples. So we take that as Prabhupada's mercy, like that. So that shiksha in that sense. So definitely Vidura is taking Uddhava's shiksha. It's no technicality. There's no GBC there checking the checklist, okay, you know. Put a complaint, you know, he didn't do the right thing, you know. <laughs> some, some, <laughs> Bharatan is very natural, like that. So things flow just like these rivers. You don't have to tell them left, right. They just go, you know, they are going to the ocean, like that. So, in the same way, if we are humble enough and have good association, we will naturally be en route to Krishna sooner or later. Shri Prabhupada ki, Shri Prabhupada ki, Nitai Gopamanandi, Yadi Gopamanandi.